What's up guys? Welcome back to our channel. We're in Southern California. We've been here for a few days. We're enjoying the weather. It is fantastic. It's literally got to be like, what, 70, 80 degrees outside. It's windy. The sun is out. There's not a single cloud in the sky. But anyhow, right to the point. You guys see me in this, this beautiful backyard? I'm at Greg Carroll's house. If you guys don't know who Greg Carroll is, Greg Carroll is basically the voice of Reefa Palooza. He's been doing this for over 20 years in the hobby, maybe even longer. The tank is getting more mature now, so invite us over. We're gonna go check it out, so let's go inside. Let's do this, guys. All right, guys, we just made it inside to see this beautiful tank. We're here with Greg. Greg, what's up, buddy? What's up, buddy? How you doing? Yeah, Good chilling, man. You Thank you for inviting us over to see the tank again. No problem. No we problem. seen this tank exactly this time last year. Was it yeah. one year ago? But it might have been a little longer because it was on a wholesaler trip. Yeah. I'm so impressed with the growth. If you guys can see right here, man, it's just, it's crazy. So 90% Acropora dominated. Yes. <laughs> what was the reason for it? Well, you always were kind of that way, right? Yes, you know, with the yes. old tank. I, I always was, but I did. A, you know, back then, uh, what was hot was the was the chalices. Chalices yeah. were hot, so I had a lot of chalices and big ones, if you recall. Yeah, the the mummy eye, the yeah, pumpkin patch, yeah. the so, bogan monster, exactly. The watermelons. But Acropora is my main my main thing, so I wanted to stick with primarily Acropora. Now. Now that I've done the Acropora, it's not like I can keep spending money on Acropora, so I'm probably yeah. gonna start spending money on LPS. Don't forget guys, throughout this episode, we're hiding an egg of Casper. We've been doing it for every single video. This one's not deception. I can tell you where Casper is gonna be. If you find them, first two people to find them, post a comment below here on YouTube. First two people to post a comment, we're gonna send you a swag pack right to your door within the United States. We're gonna send you a t-shirt, couple of stickers. We'll welcome you to the family. See you guys. Greg, you've been in the hobby for how many years now, roughly? Since 1998, so 25 right. years. There you go. I started a couple years, a year or two after you. So we've been in this for a long time. We met a long time ago as well. So if we can, we're gonna try to dig into the internet and find pictures of your old tank. Yeah. You had a beautiful tank. What was it, a 220? 220 225. It was 225. Uh, six feet by 30 inches by 24 tall. And you had a beautiful, it wasn't too many corals, but you have a couple of gigantic large colonies. Yeah. It was very well manicured. So we're gonna see if we can dig some pictures of that. Absolutely. So let's dig into the tank a little bit. Uh, okay. Who made this tank? So this tank was made by uh, acrylic and glass exhibits out of Dallas, Texas. Oh, okay, AGE. AGE. They build fantastic tanks. And yes. how old, how long has the tank been set up? Uh, the tank has been set up for, I mean, I, I probably set it up four years ago. Four um, years ago? But I ran about nine, a good nine months with You kind of, yeah, it's kind of like we just left it, it alone, let it yeah. do its thing. You know, I, I come from the old school like you do. Be, no rush. You know, patient. Yeah, no rush. Yeah, my tank that I just recently set up, literally didn't do nothing for the first. Right. You guys can see the videos on my on my tanks, by the way. I'm getting ready to do the one year update on my tank on my office. But for the first six months, I didn't do much. Yeah. It's a little sick, because just like you, if I remember correctly, you started this tank with just Marco Rock completely dry. Completely dry Marco Rock. Same with me. I started with Marco Rock, which it was Chandler's Rocks who built them. Mm -hmm. But it was Marco Rock, completely dry, and I started with uh, dry uh, uh, coral media, uh, calcium reactor media, mm -hmm. and you started with bare bottom, which is a little yes. tougher yet. Yes. You know, so I can totally understand why you took nine months to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you know, listening to you, you know, you I mean, you know, you told me because you had been doing bare bottom long before I did. Yeah. You just said, in the end, it's more rewarding, but it, it's really tough to start off. So yeah. I just. Left it alone. And and it's true, it but when, you, when it. you get going, you can feed the tank, you can apply flow. Yeah. When you clean it, you can clean it meticulous like no one else's business. Yes. There's a lot of benefits to run up. But you know what? We're not going to get back and forth to the debate. There's benefits to having sand. There's benefits to go per bottom. There's, Absolutely. There's beauty on both, you know? Absolutely. So dimensions of the tank, what is it? So the dimensions of the tank are 62 inches long, 36 inches front to back, okay. 27 tall. So a lot of people think the tank is smaller than it really is because it kind of throws off the dimensions by being 27 yeah. tall. No, it's and a big tank. This tank is what, 300 gallons? 250. 250? So yeah. But it looks huge. Yeah. And I love how it's open top. Yes. The whole thing is open. We're going to give you guys some beautiful top downs. You're going to check it out. I mean, it looks incredible. You started most of this with frags with, and uh, a few exceptions, maybe? Yeah, a few, few, few exceptions. Some of them were mer little small mariculture colonies, but nothing really over, you know, not much of it was over two inches. All right, so my question it. to you, mm -hmm. since you started with some of the maricultures, how have you been making sure you stay away from 
the infamous dreaded Acropora eating flatworms. flatworms, which they're dreading, is just to say the least. Yeah, yeah. Ah. So, so I, you know, did a, a pretty, you know, regimented dip process okay. and so forth. And one of the things I do is I dip for multi weeks. Okay. So that way, if there were any eggs, you keep on going and yeah. On. So, keep on going. but at this stage, you can't take those chances anymore. Right. Because if you were right. to catch anything, correct. What are you gonna do so, with this rock? You so have now to I'm not. I'm not adding anything. If you were to, what would be your game plan? So my game plan, uh, if I were to add something else, uh, one, it would be probably get it from Worldwide Corals. Okay. Someone who I trust. <laughs> <All right. laughs> no. And uh, the other thing is I do have a nano tank in the other room that I can put stuff in. Yeah, that's sometimes it's uh, a good thing to do, even if, in the meantime. even, you know what, and there's no SPS people. in there. And thank you for thinking that way of us when you think of clean cores, you think of us, because we go through very strong processes, yes. very rigorous process to make sure that these things are clean, especially in our display tank. But I always tell people, even though when you trust the people, you should try to do your, especially in oh, a yeah. tank at this caliber, where you've been working very hard for four years, put your hard-earned dollars into it. Mm -hmm. It is your job not to take a chance and to even have backup plans when you think. Right. So I was like to, hey, you get a coral, you dip it, you inspect it, you blow it, and then you put the coral in a different tank mm -hmm. where you can possibly watch it grow for the next two to four, six, eight weeks, 10 weeks, whatever it takes. Right. Then you say, wow, this coral is doing very well. with Now itself. I can move. Now I can dip it again or I can yeah. cut the whole top and then move it into the tank. I think when it comes to an acropora tank, going the extra mile to make sure that you don't catch acropora in flowers, it just pays off on the long run because most of most of us, the acropora keepers, you can say most of them, if you haven't catch them, I'll be very surprised. Yeah. They're very they're very sneaky to get into your tank. When they're very babies and they're new, they're transparent, you get not, you, you do not get to see them, you don't see any bite marks because they're too little for you to even see that. So again, uh, I just wanted to ask that question. Right. A lot of these corals I bought as brownouts, so I had no idea what they would do. Doesn't that feel good when you turn it a brown coral? It feels so good when you when you turn a brown coral. Uh, <laughs> you know, a long time ago I was taught divers don't pick brown corals. Yeah. Not only do they not pick brown corals, farmers definitely don't farm brown corals. So yeah, maricultured they farmers, they're not they're not filming, they're not farming <laughs> junk. So, you know, I just get it and I see what happens. And you know, I will move corals around in the tank to find that perfect location where it really loves its color. Funny you say that. I get to see a lot of people that the after brown corals, rescue corals. I get people coming to a store, you go, hey, any rescue corals, any brown out corals you want to give me for five bucks? And you know what? If it's someone I know, I'll go dig in the bag and I'll be like, here, take this home and tell me how they do it. I might even throw them a few extra ones just because yeah. I can appreciate when someone wants to put the love into rescuing an animal that if you don't give it the love, the animal most likely is gonna die or it's gonna end up going somewhere because it takes someone to give it the special care to it, you know? So yes, yes. Kudos to you and all the people that are working into those. Thank you. So Greg, this this uh, crazy fox chalice, a lot of people might not know about it, but we made that thing famous with Jason Fox like 10, 12 years ago. Oh yeah. Looks incredible, buddy. I freaking love it. Also, I can't help it but to look at this Raja Rampage also from Jason Fox. Looks incredible, man. It's just phenomenal. You got a little gold torch. I see your love for a little LPS coming around. It's coming around. I see a little orange hammer you're trying. Yep. And this clam, I have to look at it from the top. So, Greg, what do you call that red acro right back there? It doesn't really have a name. I have a name. It doesn't have a name. I have a name. That thing looks, it's got to be so hot pink. It's incredible. I'm jealous. What if we call it after you? We call it, I don't know. Chef Greg's Agropora or something like that. Hey man, I like it. You like it? I like it. All right, consider it done. So I like that one over there. Is that a bubble bath unicorn? That is the bubble bath unicorn. Uh, it's a basic Agropora, but I love it. I think it's just yeah. so different, you know? Yeah, definitely, definitely has has several colors in it and that's what, what I love. And one more, Greg. What do you call this blue one right here in the front? You know, that's another one that doesn't have a name, Vic. All right, so check this out, guys. Since we haven't, we don't have a name for that one. Best name? We will name it after that one. Hey, is that I a like deal, Greg? Hell yeah. All right, so you need to go over the comments. I, I need you to get involved. Definitely. And you're gonna go in there yourself in the comments. You're gonna be like, you're the winner that calls officially. All right, All let's right? do it, let's cool. do it. So tell me about your fish a little bit. I see you, you're, you got a couple. So yeah, um, I, I, 
you know, like you, uh, I believe in, in fish that actually serve a purpose. Utilitarian. Utilitarian fish. Get to work, guys. So, we got stuff to do. So yeah, I started off with the yellow tangs. Uh, these were pre-ban yellow tangs. So How many you have? I got two. Two, um, okay. And they were originally the same size, but one decided to become the bully and but they're getting along pretty well. Yeah, 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 definitely. But that's cool. Actually, now that they get along and nobody has bad marks right. or anything like that and they're getting along. And I then I got the powder blue uh, was next. Um, you know, I, I've always wanted a powder blue. I've never been able to keep one, you know, even in my past tank. For yeah. some reason, they just... Finicky fish, but once yeah. they get going, I mean, just... Yeah. They like a lot of flow. Yeah, they like a lot they of like flow. They like a clean tank. They like algae every day. And they like no one giving them a hard time. I'm sure yep. he's the boss. Yes. All right. Yes, the powder, the powder blue and the yellow are the boss, the big yellow. So I'm jealous you got the white tail. Um, so yes, so why? So, well, the I wanted, no, that one came from Tahiti. Oh, that's the Tahiti one. That's oh, it looks Tahiti gorgeous, one. man. So, um, so basically I always wanted a cold tang. And of course, after the ban, we couldn't do the cold tang. So these started coming in and I'm like, okay, that's what I want. So I, I got him and I got the chocolate tang and introduced them together. Therefore, there'd be less aggression on just one of them. So my goal was to make sure that, you know, they made it, you know, so yeah. I just fed a lot and everything and probably day and a half of aggression and then it was over, over and done with. Do you feed them algae every day? I do, I do. You do? I basically on this rock here, little rock here, gotcha. I, Tight, nice and tight. Nice and tight. Put it there. And they get they all day. day. Okay, they look super healthy. They uh, they eat. And then the other fish is the angel fish, uh, which is what my daughter picked out. She wanted it and named it after herself. Got you. Are you planning <laughs> to add any um, any more fish to the tank? Yes. So I I have added um, some antheus. I'm really big on antheus. So there's seven in here right now. I just got them yesterday. I've been looking for them forever. The uh, uh, Pseudoantheus flavagutatus, or Red Saddled gotcha. Antheus. And uh, I've been asking for them for three years. I was literally on a live sale for Harry's Marine Life. And he had And him. he's all, oh, what fish are you looking for? And I put it in what I was looking for. And he's like, oh, we have those. And I'm like, no, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> so I immediately called him up, put him on hold, picked him up yesterday. Beautiful, man. I'm so, happy for you. So yeah, but they haven't come out yet. Uh, but I, I got a glimpse of a couple of them this morning. Got you. And for flow, I see you have a lot of flow. Is I have I a lot of flow. Two MP3, MP60s? No, no, no. So there's there's two MP60s okay. on the ends. Okay. And then two MP40s on the back wall. And a little surprise in the back somewhere here. And in the back here, in the back corner, we have a Panta Ray EM63. The 63. No, you don't. Yes, I On do. a 250 gallon tank. This guy's a baller. It's a reef. <laughs> it's a true reef and baller. So adding the Panta Ray definitely did a lot for the tank uh, as far as keeping the detritus out oh, of so the So you don't have it since day one? Work. No, no. I just actually added it last year. I got three of those in my 1500 gallon yep. tank. Nothing else. Three. I mean, that's pretty substantial. 1,500 gallon tank, I got three. You got two MP60s, two MP40, and one of those in a 250 gallon tank. You are yeah. killing it, buddy. So I wonder yeah. why the bare bottom is doing so well for you. Everybody's able to, to get washed off, you know? All the crows right. get to release all the bad stuff from them. For sure, for sure. So let's talk about your lights a little bit. Okay. So you run in radiums, I see. You yes. got five of them. Yes, I run the blues. Five or six, gents. Uh, these are Gen 5s. Gen 5s, okay. And I see you did some aqua illumination blaze as an accent. I did. When did you do that? So I just, right when they first came out, Yeah. Um, I got to see them and I was just in love with them. Funny you say that. I saw them too and about four months ago, I want to say, I changed the lights on my tank. I had a couple aqua illumination hydras mm -hmm. and I got rid of those and I put some of the uh, aqua illumination blades. Uh, the color is just spectacular. I got three strips on my 80 gallon uh, right. uh, water box tank and it's just doing incredible. Man. So what shocked me about the blades is the fact that you still get the shimmer. You still get a nice shimmer, even though it's kind of, it's not really a point source light. You know, the, gotcha. the way that they, they really did it perfect. I, I, I just, yeah, gotcha. I loved them. 
and uh, I got Adaptive Reef. Uh, they made some uh, some mounts for me, so I can I can turn the light. Wow, looks good, buddy. Yeah. So, how many hours do you run the lights every single day? So the lights run from 8.30 a.m. to 10.30 p.m., 14 hours. 14 hours? Yeah. Wow. And you say your part is pretty strong. You told me at the bottom of the time you got three, 400? Yeah, 350, 400. What are we reaching, 900 bottom. at the top, 1,000? And uh, at where the corals are, about 600. 600? Five, five to 600. And then, yeah, at the top, I mean, I, I've never even right actually married, measured well, it. Well, they're gonna reach there eventually, so yeah. you're gonna start planning for it. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So, wow, it looks fantastic, buddy. Let's talk well, a little you. bit about your filtration. So, okay. uh, what are you running for filtration? I see so, for gotta... filtration, all I really, uh, you know, I have a, a sock. The, the tank has a sock holder. Okay. Uh, we have the protein skimmer, which is the Ultra Reef uh, From Vertex? No. No, it's from game? a company in Italy. Ultra Italy. Reef, yeah. Okay, I never heard of them. Yeah, and it's a beast. Um, Are they in the United States right now or no? No, well, no. you mean you can get the skimmers in the U U.S. through BRS. Okay. So cool. what happened is they had an open box buy. I had been looking at the skimmer forever. I love the design. Okay. And, and it's performing very well because I can see how clean amazing. your tank is. Yeah. If anything, I told you to slow down a little when this came in. You did. The tank looks super, super clean, guys. Right. Seriously, super clean is a good thing, but I just don't want to make sure that he goes, a little bit past beyond super clean. Exactly. At that point, you're going to strip down tank, you know? But amazing, amazing. I mean, these aquapores are loving you, man. So, you're running a calcium reactor as well? I am running a calcium reactor. By who? Uh, this is the uh, Reef Octopus okay. uh, CR220. So, it's a nine inch calcium reactor, single chamber. Okay. Um, I run a full, a full stream. Full tilt. And, uh, and you have problems keeping up with the demand. I have problems keeping up with the Are demand. Are you dosing Kalkwasser to keep up with it? So I manually will dose Kalkwasser. Okay, nighttime? If, if, no, 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 just I will pour some in. Gotcha. If I need to boost, get a little okay. boost. It, you know, maybe once a week. Maybe. Once a week? Just, just a little, it doesn't take okay. much. Are you using so. any controllers? Yes, I have the uh, Hydros uh, Control 4. Okay, how you like it? I love it. I yeah. love it. It's just, you know, it's it's the simplicity of it all. How easy it is to program. It's like playing on a cell phone. That's gotcha. the whole thing. The whole experience of it is like playing on a cell phone where you just can figure it out. It's no problem. It's easy. Cool. Well, I've been hearing nothing but good things actually. Recently, the guys at the shop took a class to understand how to Yeah, I saw you guys had set, set one up. Yeah, yeah. So, so, water changes. How often do you do them? I try to do water changes at least once every two months. Um, I months. would like to do them once a month, but uh, in the summers, uh, I can't because the water in my garage is about 90, 95 degrees. And the water gets very expensive when in Southern California in too. In Southern and California, you to make water, yeah. Yeah, but I got a good RO unit. It's, it's a one-to-one -one rejection ratio. Okay. And, uh, you know, so, so I don't have a lot of wastewater. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So what kind of salt do you use when you do water changes? I use Brightwell uh, okay. Neomarine. How long have you been using Brightwell Neomarine? Since the beginning on this tank. Right, um, cool. I was always an Instant Ocean guy. I still don't think there's anything wrong with Instant Ocean. You want to try something different. You wanted to Just try something different. and uh, Like your last tank has sand and this one is bare bottom. Correct. Kudos uh, to you, Greg. For a lot of people, once they get set on their ways, they don't want to change anything. But Right. And that was and that's, that's one thing about me. I wanted, when I set up this tank, I wanted to make sure it was it was doing something different. I've already done the old thing. I already did metal halide. Yes. I already did metal halide with T5. So it was like when I just set this tank up, it was gonna be it was gonna be LED. Period. I know you have tinkered with a lot of equipment in the past because I know yeah. you've been involved with the very heavily involved with the cloth for a very, very long yes. time. And you get to see a lot of behind the scenes. You've right. been running Reef of Palooza too for a very long time. Mm -hmm. You know, especially here in Southern California. I mean, you've been involved with the show since 2000 and... 2004, when the first one. That's what I'm saying, so yep. very long time. And you get to know all the manufacturers. You get Absolutely. To, you get to see all the new products every year. And you can't help it but to say, ah, you know what? Let me see if I can sell my all used protein skimmer and try this new one. Exactly. And that's why it's cool to me. Now that I've been traveling and doing a lot of fish tanks, it's been super cool to go to different people's houses and see different lights and different protein schemas and powerheads and things that you didn't, don't even know they exist because sometimes you're so caught up into your own world into what you're used to knowing that you don't experience. If I'm, if I'm not buying a new light, sometimes maybe I'm not the one researching new equipment. I mean, right. I'm running a business and we're constantly busy farming corals and doing other things. So 
it's cool for me to go and get expo get exposure to these different uh, exactly these different dry goods, you know. Couple more things. I see you use some restore right here. What do you yes. do with it? So uh, basically, uh, with the restore, uh, that's my amino acids uh, okay. that I've been using. I really like it. Um, I, you know, I, I know a lot of people use the the coral aminos, but I, I, I've been happy with the restore, and, okay. and so that's that's what I've been running. Um, I put about uh, 30 milliliters in the tank every night. Okay. And uh, I think the you know, I saw an explosion in the polyp extension nice. and so forth, and a little bit deeper colors uh, with a lot of the corals. Very nice. So, last but not least, I want to get you with a question. Give me a description of everything that you feed, roughly. Okay, so I have a concoction of, of uh, TDO, uh, which is uh, the Reef Nutrition brand uh, dry food, pellet yes. food. I have five different sizes in my auto feeder. Okay. In that, mixed in with the TDO is uh, Fleischmann's Instant Rise bread yeast. Uh, the co cool thing about that is it dissolves and it actually feeds all the microfauna in the tank. All your pods will eat it and everything. That go That's fed four four times a day. Okay. Uh, through the, via the, auto, the Hydros auto feeder. Uh, also, in the evenings, I'm dosing the Oyster Feast, the Fido Feast, the uh, uh, Rota Feast. So you do it daily, all of those? Yeah, yeah, just just okay. a few drops Do you shut off night. your protein skimmer when you do that? Yeah, for an hour. Okay, yeah, cool. So just, I just hit the feed timer on the on the protein skimmer, it's set for an hour, and it, it shuts it down for an hour. Cool. Well, Greg, I think that covers everything. Anything that you think we're missing about the tank that people should know? No, I, I mean, you know, I, I try to be simple. Um, you know, with my filtration, it's just it's just the sock and the protein skimmer. That's it. There's nothing else to it. I, I only run carbon if I feel that the water has color to it. Yeah. You know, and it needs to be cleaned. Um, but I haven't had carbon in the tank in I think almost a year now. I don't think you need to. The tank looks yeah. so clean right now with the amount of flow that you have and the size of your protein skimmer. Yeah. I think it's and then, super, uh, super, so super that, good. So that's it. Well, Greg, I must say I'm super impressed with the Acropora tank. You are freaking killing it. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us over. I Absolutely. appreciate it. Absolutely. I'll see you next year again for Reef Palooza, if not before that. You'll see me in two months. You're right. You're right. <laughs> well, I should say, I'll see you. I'll see you next, next year, year when we come back to Southern California. I'm coming to Southern California pretty often, but most likely. We'll come back next year because the tank's looking so good. I want to see it completely overgrown next Absolutely. year. Absolutely. And we'll get to do another video. On the meantime, guys, thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Give us a like. Post some comments below. We'll see you guys on the next episode. See you guys. Thank you, guys. You are just waiting for me. I love doggies. You guys know that. Hi. You going to be on video? Huh? Look at that crazy face you got. Because you like it so much, huh? Huh?